Hey everyone, this is Derek Steinbacher, and today I want to review with you 10 things that you should know before undergoing orthognathic jaw surgery. Number one, orthodontics, or having an orthodontist. Yes, it's true, conventionally you do need an orthodontist before surgery, and typically orthodontic treatment for 6 to 12 months surgery and then a few more months of orthodontics after surgery. However, that paradigm has shifted to some extent in certain cases or patients where you can be a surgery first candidate. That means most of the orthodontics is done after surgery. Additionally, in some cases, you may be a candidate for Invisalign or clear aligner therapy in place of conventional metal braces. And lastly, some aesthetic cases or sleep apnea patients may have a perfect bite or occlusion ahead of time, but yes, we still typically want you to have an orthodontist to be part of the team to prepare for surgery. Number two, what's the definition of orthognathic or jaw surgery? In general, this refers to a series of different procedures that affects the upper jaw here, a Lafort osteotomy, where we'll typically move this through the sinuses into the appropriate position, the lower jaw, typically a sagittal split osteotomy, where we move this part with the teeth and reposition it, and or a genioplasty or a chin procedure where we change the position of your chin. So orthognathic surgery refers to usually some combination of those three procedures. Number three, what are the planning and records that we need to prepare for this surgery? These days we do a lot of 3D planning and this entails getting a CT scan from which we're able to print these types of models. Additionally, we have dental models that we obtain either with uh, typical molds or more often with scans these days. We can then virtually and digitally reposition your jaws to achieve the best result we possibly can. From 3D planning, we produce or print splints that help us reposition your jaws as well as sometimes we can use 3D titanium printing for actual plates that we're able to use customized to you. Number four, what is the surgery length and hospital stay? Typically, these surgeries take anywhere from two to four hours, a little bit longer to go to sleep, a little bit longer to wake up, and it depends on how complex and how many of the jaws we're moving and in what position or magnitude we're moving them. And in terms of hospital stay, typically one night in the hospital, sometimes more, but we're actually moving in the direction of trying to have enhanced recovery where you can almost go home the same day or within 23 hours. Number five, a lot of people ask this, but you're not wired together. 99% of the cases, you're not wired together. Sometimes you do have tight rubber bands that are holding your teeth together, but we do not, I repeat, we do not wire your jaws together. Number six, we can remove your wisdom teeth at the same time. Traditionally, you needed to have these removed ahead of time, but these days, and we'll show you a reference to one of our papers, we can remove these at the same time, and this saves you an additional procedure ahead of time, and you recover just fine having them removed at the time of jaw surgery. Number seven, there are a lot of ancillary or additional procedures that we do at the same time or concurrently with jaw surgery. These include, as mentioned, the genioplasty, where we can move the chin, fat grafting where we liposuction fat from other parts and inject it to help with contours and the aesthetics of your case, submental liposuction or lipectomy where we remove areas of fat underneath your chin to help crisp in and define that area, and we can also do skeletal augmentation where we add implants to your cheekbones or other parts of your jaw or face to enhance symmetry and the aesthetic result. Number eight, your nose and jaw surgery. Most of the time, especially for doing a Lafort or the upper jaw procedure, your nose is gonna change as a result of jaw surgery. Typically the function will improve and the appearance may get better, stay about the same or get worse. So we really wanna think about the nasal changes, anticipate how it's gonna change and if a rhinoplasty is needed, we want to plan that from the outset. Typically, that can be done three to six months later. Number nine, titanium plates. Yes, we do use titanium plates that hold the bones together. This is the reason we don't need to wire you together. Um, and these plates can stay forever in about 95, 98% of cases. 
They don't set off any issues at airports or with metal detectors, and you can have MRIs without issue if needed in the future. In some cases, you'll elect to have them remove, either people want them out, or in some rare cases, there can be inflammation associated with them. And you don't really need them after three or six months, and we can remove them then if you wish or it's determined to be necessary. And number 10, nerve or sensibility recovery. So it's true you will have some numbness after jaw surgery. The upper lip and cheeks usually come back in six weeks or two months. The lower lip and chin, because of the inferior alveolar nerve or the nerve that comes through your lower jaw to the lip and chin, that can take longer to come back. It can be six months or a year, but in most cases, 98% of cases, this does return. Um, factors that can help with this, younger age, under about age 40 or so, correlates with improved return of sensation. Additionally, some instrumentation that we use these days, uh, a piezoelectric, for instance, and some medications that we give you also correlate with nerve recovery. Thanks again for tuning in to hear about these 10 things before having orthognathic jaw surgery. Please comment any ideas or other future videos below. And remember too that this is general advice for specifics regarding your case. Please consult with your physician or your doctor in your area. Thanks again.